In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an all new stack from Hyphon RC. So this is a new company here on the market currently, and they've just released their first 20 by 20 stack with Bluetooth capabilities and a nine volt regulator. Now we're going to cover this in depth today. We'll also break down the components and also do a beginner setup guide and the timestamps will be down below and also shown in the video progress bar. So you can go ahead and skip to whatever part of the video you want. So let's go ahead and cover the accessories here. Now this is $56 and they're giving you quite a lot here. They're giving you an F4 flight controller with a nine volt regulator and built in RGB LEDs. We see we have six here that you'll be able to control through the beta flight and they might just already have a default setting set up. I haven't plugged it in, so I don't really know. So this is an F4 flight controller, which they give you. They also give you a four in one ESC rated up to 30 amps. However, the 30 amps is not, don't, don't take this as it's for a five inch quadcopter. You don't want to install anything above 13xx motors which means you know 1306 1305 uh this is the kind of recommendation i would set up because you could even tell by the accessories they're giving you and you might be like well what do you mean by that well you can see they're giving you an xt30 which means it's supposed to be set up on a small quadcopter not only that the motor pad outputs are pretty tiny so this is for a micro quadcopter and also what's really nice about this is you'll be able to run a dji setup or an hd setup with a cadex vista or even a full-fledged dji setup because it does have a 9 volt regulator on board which is really great to see here. Now they also do provide you with this PCB right here, which tells you what each pinout is on the flight control. And again, we'll cover this more in the detail once we get to that step. So another thing they provide in the packaging is actually a Bluetooth module. Now this Bluetooth module will allow you to connect to the flight controller via uh, the SpeedyB application. I've done a separate video on that. So it's really nice. They've actually uh, given you one of these with the whole package here. So you can use it for this quadcopter. You can use it for any other quadcopter, which is really great. They also give you some extra wires here. Now I'm guessing these extra wires right here are going to be for the Bluetooth module, but you can, they're too long anyway, so you'll be able to use them for more than one thing uh, if you needed to. They give you your power cables, which will connect to the XC60 and also the ESC, which is really great. A nice low ESR capacitor, which is really great to see at such a price point here. Also some heat shrinks, which will go right on to, and those heat shrinks will end up going right on top of that to cover these connections right here once you've soldered in the wires. Now they also do provide you with the connector which will connect the flight control to the ESC which makes your life hella easy. And they also do provide you with four M2 long metal screws. These are really great, especially for a stack. So in case of a crash, you know, usually the plastic ones tend to break. These will hold their ground and everything does have rubber grommets which is also a nice addition here. So they are giving you quite a lot for 56 bucks and it's actually really nice to see that, especially that they're no name. They should definitely do something a bit different here. And I really like that. You give you a nine volt regulator, they give you Bluetooth and they give you everything you need to build your quadcopter, obviously, except the video transmitter camera frame and motors obviously also but they give you everything that you need here to get started you don't really have to worry much about anything else so let's go ahead and jump into the next part of the video so in this part of the video i'm going to be showing you how to install your fpv camera and also the correct orientation that should be installed in your quadcopter because that's very important for both esc and flight controller so what you want to find first is this arrow right here and make sure that's pointing towards the front of your quadcopter where the camera is it's very important you do that and also be facing upward so you can actually see it when you look down at the quadcopter. So this is a very important step or your quadcopter will never fly. So let's go ahead and talk about the camera. So if we take a closer look at the guide here that's provided in the package, we see we have these three right here. We have ground, five volts and cam. So from looking at this, we know that we should install our camera in this area right here, which is this area on this board. So here's five volts right there. And let's go ahead and put the video line. So cam is going to be the video line and ground is going to be the black wire right here. There we go. Oh, we should actually use a different color here. And that last wire is going to be ground. Now for any camera, there's three main wires you always need, which are the ground, video, and the VCC. Those are very, very important because these are the three wires you need for any camera to operate. This OSD you could ignore, this vSense you could completely ignore, but these are the three main wires that must be installed. Now the way to install them is going to be very simple as well. So, so let's go ahead and route these real quickly. So here's the cam that's going to go to our video line, which is usually the yellow wire here. So there we go. So we have our video installed now. Now the next thing we need is the five volts. So it's just going to cross over right here. And it's going to be very simple and ground is always the black wire. So here it's going to be the gray wire. There we go. Boom. Just like that. So now we have ground, five volts and video. And basically your camera is completely ready now and it should be functioning perfect. So let's go ahead and move on to the next step. 
All right, so in this part of the video, we are going to be covering the video transmitter. Now there's something very important before you go ahead and start connecting it, which is you need to figure out if your video transmitter takes five volts only or battery voltage. Battery voltage would say seven to 26 volts or seven to 24 volts. So you need to figure out what your video transmitter takes first. So let's go ahead and start off with the normal battery voltage VTX, so a video transmitter that takes seven to 26 volts. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the guide here. So the guide has this right here. It looks like five volts or BV, but it's actually nine volts because this flight controller has a nine volt regulator. So nine volts is well within the seven to 26 volts. So that's where we're gonna run our red wire for our video transmitter if yours is not the five volt only. So let's go ahead and do that together. So it's one, two, three, four, and then five and six. So this one right here is going to be our red wire. And our VCC is this first one right here on this uh, video transmitter. So this is seven to 26 volt video transmitters. Now, if yours is a five volt video transmitter, very important, you probably wanna grab it from this pad right there. That's one of the best paths to grab it from. You're like, okay, well, why don't you just grab it from this pad right here? Well, this pad's gonna be for your receiver. So that's why we're not touching this yet. So we can make our life a little bit easier later on and or you can get five volts from here. So it just depends on what you wanna do. So if yours is a, video, is a five volt video transmitter, you can go ahead and grab it from here. And then we can just say boom, and we'll call this the five volt line. So this is if you're a five volt only video transmitter. And just like that, we have our power basically completely done. So there's many places where you can get your five volts from if you're a five volt only. The next wire is going to be ground and it's going to be identical for both, whether you have a 5 volt and or a 9 volt video transmitter. And as we can tell, it's right next to the uh, 9 volt right here. So let's go ahead and set that up. So it's going to be this one right here. And I'm just going to go ahead and cross over and just put it on the ground or the minus, whatever your video transmitter might say. And now we're left with the last thing, which is the video line. So the video line is gonna be on V out, video out usually or VTX, they call them. So it's gonna be this one right there. We're gonna go ahead and just quickly run it over. And just like that, we are done. Now, if you wanted to install smart audio, I'm not gonna cover it into too far detail here. You don't have to, but it, it just makes your life a little bit easier sometimes. Uh, you can set, up, set it up right here on TX6. So here we have uh, right there, which is RX, this one right there basically this right there so i don't really want to screw everything up but that's where you'd put your smart audio irc tramp protocol on this one right here tx6 and tx6 which is going to be uart6 in the beta flights ports tab and that's where you'd set up your smart audio protocol and or irc tramp protocol just make sure you take note of the input voltage of your vtx before connecting this let's go ahead and jump to the next step all right, guys, so in this part of the video, we are going to be covering your receiver's connection. Now, we're going to cover both IBUS and also SBUS because their signal wire connects in different places. So let's go ahead and start with SBUS, which is basically FR Sky. So FR Sky, SBUS, that's what we're going to start off with. So SBUS is going to be connected right here on the RC. And I know it's not that obvious, but that's where you're going to want to set up SBUS right here. So let's just go ahead and connect this real quick. So we're just going to go boom, boom and we're gonna say SBUS goes here. Now, if you connected SBUS anywhere else, it just basically won't work. Now, if you have IBUS, the place where you wanna go ahead and set this up could be on any R pad or this one right here, this RC pad. I don't know why they call it RC here. So we'll just say like this, and we're gonna say just an arrow here, and we're just gonna say this is IBUS. So this is where you would put your IBUS signal. Now, the power is gonna be basically identical to both so they're both going to take five volts and they're going to take from the exact same place so here's a five volt for our receiver right there and then we're going to need ground and ground is just right next to it so we're just going to go ahead and cross over twice maybe yep, there we go and just like that we have everything set up so the power will go in the same position whether you're ibus or sbus and the only thing that's going to connect in a different place is going to be your signal and you should be good to go. And well, that's gonna conclude it for this video, guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, everything is linked down below. So go ahead and check those out. Let's greatly support the channel. Come join my Patreon. I do a ton of giveaways and I give you access to my secret shop and some other crazy cool stuff. So go ahead and check the Patreon. You'll know what you could get. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.